Today we get to give Nintendo credit where credit is due. They did something absolutely positive to the Nintendo Switch Online service. Something that, uh, you know, probably should have been done right away, but at least shows Nintendo is listening and knew that people didn't like it. Now, the things that they didn't like were probably a minority of gamers complaining, even though we tend to complain pretty loud on the internet, including myself. Uh, but it is nice to see that Nintendo is actually listening and this is a positive thing for the future of Nintendo Switch Online and the Nintendo Switch and just in general uh, moving forward. Before we get into this, I will remind you we are giving away a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, and or a Nintendo Switch OLED to one lucky winner at some point at the end of March. To enter, head to the gleam.io link down in the description, and I wish everybody luck. So I'm getting this right off Nintendo Life because we deal first with what happened with the latest release, Majora's Mask. And it says, Nintendo yesterday added another game to the Switch Online expansion pack and updated the N64 library to version 2.0.0. There have been all sorts of improvements, but this latest update's even better than expected, it seems. According to the Zelda 64 researcher and Twitter user Fig, as highlighted by Nintendo data miner Oatmeal Dome, the emulation of the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask on Switch Online service is actually more accurate to the N64 in one situation than it was on the Wii Virtual Console. Now, spoiler warning here, this is talking about a cutscene in the game. Majora's Mask has been on a long time, so I'm not too worried about it. Oatmeal Dome says, Majora's Mask, here's a situation where the Switch version is actually better than the previous releases and more accurate to the N64, thanks to a patch added by Nintendo. It fixes a cutscene running too fast, causing it to end too early. And then Fig adds, on the Switch version of Majora's Mask, there's a lag intentionally added to the giant's cutscene from frames 1,120 to 1,616. This is to simulate the N64 lag and fix an issue where the Virtual Console and other emulators finish the cutscene before the song ends. So it's quite impressive that in this case, as the Wii Virtual Console N64 library is still considered by many as the best generation of Nintendo 64 emulation. As Oatmeal Dome further explains, the accuracy found in the Switch version of Majora's Mask is good news for fans who have been asking for an experience more like the original N64 release, but not so great for the speedrunning community as it technically takes longer to complete runs. So this is obviously really, really interesting. And if you go into the further fixes Nintendo has done with this 2.2 or this 2.00 update, there's a lot of things uh, that ended up going really, really well. And some of this is like fixing the fog and stuff in Ocarina of Time, getting some of the frame pacing correct. In fact, it's gotten to the point now where, uh, well, let's just say the emulation on Nintendo Switch might be very soon, if not already, the best N64 emulation we have seen on a Nintendo platform to date. Now, maybe it won't top PC and people's abilities to mods. And yes, we all are aware the Steam Deck reviews have dropped. And obviously, it looks like a really fantastic system. And that's probably going to emulate these games even better. But reality is that for an official means, a legal way to purchase and or play these games since on Switch, you don't really purchase, you rent. Uh, it, it, this ends up being really, really good news. And this is good news moving forward because it does mean Nintendo is actually taking it seriously when people come out and say, hey, the emulation for these games isn't good enough. And that's that to me is my biggest takeaway. Like, yes, the fixes are great. The fact that that cutscene and many others in Majora's Mask are likely much better. I just want Nintendo to take this seriously and put thought and care. The best versions of the base game emulated should always be on Nintendo platforms. And that hasn't been the case, even dating back to Wii, where Wii emulation was considered to be the best so far, but wasn't Perfect. And here we see an example with Majora's Mask, something fixed that wasn't even fixed on the Wii. So this, again, this is Nintendo taking this problem seriously. And that to me is obviously the most exciting part about this and exciting for the future of Nintendo Switch Online, because I think we're starting to see an about face from Nintendo where they're starting to realize, hey, you know what? This service maybe isn't as good as it should have been. Oh, the Animal Crossing DLC, that's great. Let's throw in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC and make that part of the service. Hey, you know, SNES and NES is nice. Let's throw N64 Genesis and consistently deliver one N64, one high quality N64 game per month. Now, this still is not up to snuff to other platforms giving you handfuls of, you know, newer generation games every month with games of gold and stuff like that. Obviously, Game Pass, this is a far cry from Game Pass, but... These are all positive steps in the right direction. And as much flack as I've given Nintendo, as much criticism as I have given 
the Nintendo Switch Online service, and especially the expansion pack. The fact we don't have voice chat locally on the system, a way to message people, a way to set up groups. There are so many missing features. I mean, heck, people got excited when Bluetooth audio was added when it should have been their day one. But we do need to recognize when Nintendo is actually making improvements and strides forward, right? First, brand new server infrastructure that's being implemented on games. And so far, the games that's been put in, hey, guess what? It actually is really, really good. Monster Hunter Rise being the proving ground that those servers make a massive difference. Obviously, improving the emulation and making it almost perfect to the N64 on the Nintendo Switch. Again, massive improvement over the original release. Yes, yes, yes. Keep giving me more of that. Oh, we're going to add more and more value to the expansion pass and maybe put all of our DLC there? Yes, yes, yes. I know that's a little early to say they'll put all their DLC there, but at least all the major DLC since it came out, they have put on that service. Uh, and we'll have to see what they add in the future. Um, it's of note that you know, even Nintendo using you know the FSR you know, from AMD and, and using some upscaler, even though it's with Nintendo Switch Sports, a really weird title to need to use it on, is still a positive direction and shows Nintendo's listening to people who say, hey, sometimes the games on Switch not being able to hit a consistent 30 FPS at minimum, yeah, it's a little weird. Games, you know, like Super Mario Odyssey being at 900p and not able to hit 1080p back in 2017, and let alone what's coming up with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Breath of the Wild 2, yeah, that's a little weird. And Nintendo is taking it seriously. While they haven't obviously made the significant hardware advances many people want to see, especially in wake of the, you know, whatever, the, the Steam Deck coming out, it is notable that Nintendo does seem to be taking these concerns seriously and doing the very best of what they have. Emulation-wise, no real reason the Switch couldn't have perfect emulation for N64 and earlier. So yeah, they're starting to actually focus on that. Oh, the Nintendo Switch Online Service, look, if you're going to charge us all this money and then an additional you know, money on top for an expansion pack, you're going to need to add value. And Nintendo is looking like they're attempting to add value. Oh, you're going to focus on online play, so 2 and 3 coming out. Well, we need things to get better. Hey, let's create a brand new server infrastructure that actually works and isn't outdated. Okay, great. And hey, look, some of your games are going to have frame rate problems especially six years into the platform hey you know what let's actually take advantage of existing technologies out there that can help us improve that this is nintendo showing growth this also makes me incredibly excited for what nintendo has coming with their next platform because if nintendo is this in tune with what fans are saying and with modern technologies like fsr then this is going to really give me Great hope that Nintendo knows what they're doing with their next system because reality is the Steam Deck is what it is. It's a portable PC. It's not technically the same thing, although it does make PC gaming, I would say, maybe more accessible than it's ever been. You don't need to modify. You don't need to hook up anything. But reality is... I'm just glad Nintendo's paying attention. Nintendo's listening. Nintendo's improving. Six years in, Nintendo is improving the Switch platform and the services it offers and the online experience. It's still got a long ways to go, but we need to recognize positive directions Nintendo's heading in, especially when we start to look forward to Nintendo's next platform in two to three years, which I presume will get something in two to three years. Nintendo is showing immense growth under Furukawa, showing that they care what the consumer's feedback really is. And they're implementing as much as they can right now with current hardware. So yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Nintendo, for listening. We've been on record with Reggie fils you know, former president of Nintendo America, noting that Nintendo doesn't really care what fans say. They don't listen to fans. All the fan petitions don't matter, like Operation Rainfall or Operation Moonfall for Majora's Mask 3D. Like, oh, these, these things don't matter. But here we see Nintendo legitimately making positive changes to their platform based on consumer feedback. That is awesome. And I hope that this is a sign of things to come under the new regime at Nintendo with Shintaro Furukawa. I know some people think Furukawa is a little bit disconnected from the fans. He's not in front of the camera. He's a businessman. He doesn't have this vivid personality to put out there like Iwata did. But, but if he's actually willing to listen to fan feedback and not just constantly apologize, no offense, Satoru Iwata, may you rest in peace. You apologize a lot for the same mistakes over and over again. But actually listen to that feedback implement it. I think that is the most important fundamental change inside Nintendo in 30 years. Listening to your actual consumers, making your products better, 
And obviously, this can lead to a significantly better product when you bring your next platform out. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljantz from Nintendo Prime. <sighs> Can't wait to get back into the studio, folks. It's getting exciting. The floor is getting put in. Uh, the entire upstairs in the home will be done today. Tomorrow is a big day for the basement and studio. Uh, it won't. Uh, the studio won't actually be done until uh, Monday. But still, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Uh, and that's just the flooring, by the way. I don't think well, the, we're hoping that all the renovations we can pull off in a day. We've already got some of the stuff done. Um, and so we're hoping that by the end of March 1st, so starting on March 2nd, maybe even March 1st, doing a, a stream or something, uh, we're hoping that we're able to get this new studio out to you guys, show you the new Nintendo Prime, get that new vlog out to you. We've already got lots of footage recorded showing off the process showing off uh, adding things removing things uh and much more to come i i'm, I'm really excited for this studio renovation i hope you guys are as well uh, i know some of our most hardcore fans are looking forward to it. most of you honestly all these improvements are just to make content make creating better for me easier for me and better looking better sounding better everything for all of you in an ideal world none of you guys give two craps about these studio renovations and instead, what you care about is what I'm able to do in this studio that maybe I couldn't do before or couldn't do as well or as easily before. So I hope you're looking forward to a one-of-a-kind, unique experience at Nintendo Prime, because I know I am. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.